Okay, my wonderful friends, as you know, this is Roger Mudfoster University, and that is the back of this giant human fingertip. I was the first in the world to find giant humans, and I had them CAT scanned, and I had them DNA tested, and they are mitochondrial DNA. You see that? Can you see that? Those are tendons that go up to the finger so it can do all these kind of things. That's the black, which is the vein blood, and this is the arterial side. This is where the bone meets up against the next bone and bumps up. And this is that fingertip. And this is the pad side of the fingertip, the bottom, and that's where the tendons lock in on the sides. And that is the apical tuft, and I have another one around here somewhere. That is the apple here. It is. This is what this looks like underneath. And this is the side that faces down that has all of the little bumps on it. And that's the side that faces up where the bone attaches to it. And that gives you so much strength. Every one of these, let me put this down for a second, smidge heavy after a while when you get old. This is from the top of the fingertip. That's the bottom, the grip skin. And that lets you pull and real. This we have the biggest ap apical tuft of any creature that alive is what I understand. Bigger than gorillas, and that is one of the balls. That would be a ball, a ball, a ball, a ball, ball. And they, all they have straps coming back down the fingertip. Can you see that? No, not well. And they come back down the fingertip, and that lets you do all the things with your finger. Now, it's DNA certified, you know, the whole, and, and by a certified lab. They tested for two regions in the mitochondrial DNA, and both of them were 100% exact matches. So it comes from the human line of giants. And then I had another one tested, which was... Another fingertip three feet long, and that one still has the actual fingerprints on the bottom. So I'm not coming here with like, don't pay attention to this, and you have to guess at that. And I have the actual physical evidence. I expect to be talked to, and I, I'm ignored. So if people are saying, oh, the lawyer is complaining again. He's been complaining for 10 years. Yes, because nobody will step up and do their job. Basically, that's why I'm complaining. And, and now I, I want the government to do something about this. This is absolute nonsense. Okay, now don't forget, this goes back to uh, this over five years ago. These giants, DNA, CAT scan. Jesse Garant and Associates did the CAT scans. Now, what I want you to understand about CAT scans on mud fossils is you look at it and you say, okay, let's do a CAT scan and we'll see the bones inside. No, you don't see that. And you say, oh, well, why, Roger? Well, why? Well, it's not real. Yes, it is real. And the reason I can show you in the CAT scan Jesse Garan, what a fabulous, fabulous place to work with. You see these blood vessels? You see the blood vessels coming up? The rest of it just looks like, like there's nothing there. Well, that's because it's a, a process called nucleophilic substitution. And the nucleophilic substitution means that the rocks, like the, this looks just like a piece of mud. Well, that's been invaded. That is a distal phalanges. Anybody that knows what a distal phalanges looks like understands. That's the blood vessels. The, the, the vein is on this side, the artery is on that side. It blew it out. This is really the pattern of the bone, and that is where the uh, apical tuft sits at the end. This particular hand was all eroded one side and not the other. Here's the palm from it right here. And you see this silvery looking stuff? That's grip skin. Let me see if I got another shot of it. Well, it's pretty good. You see that? That's your palm. All right, this is the stuff that wraps around here. It almost looks like it's pasted on there. And then that thing runs right down, the same as yours. And then the thumb runs off this way. And this is red fleshy stuff. This is the grip skin and it's silver, you see it? And that's because it's a very special skin. It's extremely tough. And it, I believe it has a lot of iridium in it and silicon and all of the really tough, tough stuff. And it creates what they call feldspar. 
a really heavy feldspar. In in well here, um, oh boy, I don't have the. Uh, hold on one second. I got it laying around here somewhere. I got a fingertip that shows it. Here it is. All right, here's. You have to look at this pretty careful. Let me get a light on here. Inside the grip skin is these fibers. Now, I hope you can see those fibers. You see those fibers running through there? They are tough as hell. You see them? And at the tip, that's the blood blew out from the arterial side. This is the arterial side. And I've looked at it in a microscope. You can see, if you really pay attention in the microscope, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this thing, but in the microscope you can actually see where the artery and the vein was. And then you see what happens inside? They crystallize in all kinds of different ways, depending upon what chemistry it was in. But the grip skin, that's the tough stuff. You see that? That is just as tough, as strappy, as tough as can be. And that's and this is blood has just eroded down. It, it was it died laying like this. That's what I believe. And the blood ran out because it pushes out of the uh, arterial side. And the vein side is on this side, which would go back. And then it ran down, and it just congealed underneath. So anyway, th we got a lot to think about. And I mean, I've got every single possibility covered here. I know this stuff inside now for 10 years, and not a single person will talk to me. So that's what, yes, I am complaining. I am a screamer. I am a yeller. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Just walk away, go in the woods? That's another fingertip right there. I've got stuff coming out of my ears. And I and I didn't do it just, you know, half ass. I did the job right. And and, and again, Jesse Garant uh, they did seven cast scans for us. And and they were they, they did them for free. All I had to do was pay this through shipping. That's that's on a bone ball. Well, here it is right here. Oh. And, they, they, you know, they, their equipment, I'm telling you, they were so nice to me. Jesse, thank you, thank you. Fabio, thank you. You people were just fabulous. And the work was so much more superior than anything else I had done anywhere else. Because we had had other CAT scans done. Now, that's a ball of a bone. And that bone... This is the tendon that reached up to that bone, and that's the piece that runs off your finger on the side, or well, off of the, off of your knuckle, because this is the knuckle, and that tendon runs up or down, whatever. Maybe the knuckle, the tendon runs this way, and then out to the finger. I'm not positive, but I, I am positive that is muscle, and on the other side of that muscle. That bone ball is eroded completely down, and you see all the reddish-looking, rusty stuff. That's where blood is. Wherever you see that is blood. And then, it, see this here? That's nucleophilic substitution. That just turned into mud. They said, oh, that's just a muddy rock. No, that is the inside of a bone. And the other side still has the muscle on it. And it still has a tendon coming down the side. And that tendon embedded itself into somewhere in here, which gave you this kind of ability to move around. Now, this was also CAT scanned, DNA tested, 100% human, 100%. And I, it's just, any, any doctor would know about this, and these are the lobes of the lung, and that's a little flap on the bottom of the lung. We took it out of the red blood down here somewhere, a little pin drill. You go inside, you don't just scrub it off the surface. Everything I did was deep inside to get the DNA. So I am not just guessing at anything here. And I deserve the right to be heard. Now, I understand when it's, oh, the guy's coming to us saying there's no space station exists and there's no rockets and there's no satellites and the Earth is flat. Obviously, you don't pay attention to somebody like that. Of course. I'm not coming to you with that kind of statements. I am coming to you superseding every single word you people have said. And I expect that the kids going to school have the right to be taught the truth. I've been after Yale for almost 10 years now. Yale University, Harvard, all of them, refuse to discuss this information. Now, to me, I don't think that's correct. Maybe you think it is. 
But I don't think the education system would feel good about this. However, they won't stand up. Nobody will stand up. Okay, my friends, I have a huge favor to ask of you. This is on Facebook, and this is called Teach to Lead. And I have been trying to teach, and um, I don't care about leading. I just want to be to be have a discussion. It says, hey, teach to lead alumni. Have you checked your email recently? A sighting announcement in your inbox. Open it and get ready to revise, refresh, and renew your ideas. So they're looking for new things. So here's what I am posting. Nobody's commented here yet. It says there's a new atomic model and it works quite well. I would like comments as it changes everything. They're talking about education. Now, is education just strictly repeat what I tell you to say? Or is it is it investigation of evidence? Let's find out. I just hit enter and let's find out if they will respond. Because I'm talking about dark matter and if that isn't important to the educational situation, I don't know what is. Now this came from our government agency because I'm trying to get a hold of the government and say you guys got to do something. U.S. Department of Education. They say okay let's let's figure this out. Let's tra change things. They're talking about student loans and college accreditation and transforming teaching and family and community engagement and all these things. I haven't had one single teacher respond to me ever in 10 years. And I have, this is just the, the, the physics is just the tip of the iceberg. The other stuff is the mud fossils, which we all know about, and they're giant human beings, and they're all kinds of things. That's a goose head. You see the feather pattern on the head? See the feathers? That's a goose. And that's his neck. And I just, see that neck right there? It died laying like this in some form of a flood. There was a giant flood on the earth. It's time to take and stop this nonsense of disengagement when you don't want to hear something. I'm done with it. By the way, I just, I, I tried to contact them on Twitter. I've been bumped off of Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Well, Wow, I'm on. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> Your account is suspended, not permitted. I thought I was back up, but nope. Okay, so about that uh, huge favor, all I'm asking you to do is to ask for engagement, which means to discuss the evidence that I'm presenting, not to say we won't look at it. And that's what's happened. Now, there is such a thing as called fiduciary obligation. That means when you are in charge of somebody else, telling them what they should do and have to do, you are their fiduciary and they are teaching these kids how to make a living and how to be intelligent and learn. And instead, they're telling them, recite what I say, even though I know what I'm saying is not correct. And if anybody has any competence whatsoever at Yale or Harvard or any of these institutions, they should have obviously seen what I showed or they have just decided to be a fiduciary failure. That's all I'm going to say. So I expect everybody should go go to all of these universities and say, why are not you why are you not paying attention to mud fossil university? Why are you not paying attention to mud fossils? Why are you not paying attention to electron flood theory? Why won't you engage? That's all I'm asking for. I love y'all.